this world, most uh, human beings don't get any question at all about uh, uh, God or meaning of life, goal of life, purpose of life. They just don't get the question at all in the mind. As long as they get their food, they get a place to sleep, they get um, some sense gratification, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, as they say. And uh, what else? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, we cannot hear you. Uh, could you unmute yourself? Hey, hey. 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 Sorry, mute that now. Mute it now. You can hear now? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes. Okay, huh? Okay, now now they can hear now, they're saying. Okay. So I, I was telling that in this world most people don't uh, have any spiritual question, spiritual inquisitiveness. Uh, but uh, they are materially everybody is inquisitive in this world. There is no doubt about that. Uh, you, you can you can easily see that in the material world. People, so I was telling many examples of, uh, uh, you know, people asking questions about where to invest the bank money, which bank is the best bank. Hmm. Food, they ask questions about food, they ask about clothing, they ask about fashions, uh, designs. People ask about uh, uh, sex life. People ask all these questions. are so very common in this world. Uh, but when it comes to God, that's the last thing that will pass their head, most people. So, as if it is uh, not a very important thing at all in life, uh, people, people generally think that you live out your life and then one day when the death comes, who knows what's going to happen next. This is actually atheistic philosophy. Huh? It's not that only science has become very advanced, so we have atheistic people now. If we think like that, we are sadly mistaken. Because in Vedic times also there were atheistic people, you know. There's one fellow who says, Rinam Kritva, Gritam Pivet, Yavad Jivet, Sukham Jivet, Basmin Bhutasya Dehasya, Kutaha Puna Ragamana Bhavet, he says. This is actually called Sarvat Muni. He's saying, Rinam Kritva, Gritam Pivet. He says that one should gather ghee, some or other, by big bar of steel, and one should cook foods, which are very fine foods. Um, like uh, puri and jalebi and all those things. Uh, with ghee, you make it, he says. And then, yavad jivet, sukham jivet. And eat as long as you are living, eat well. Hmm? Four times a day, eat well, he says. Basmin Buddha said, when the, when the body drops dead to the ground, who has seen what is going to come next life? Is there a next life or not? Who knows? Like that, he says. Actually, some of us may feel, how can he be so atheistic? And we are not less atheistic ourselves. You can see that it is not that we are very awakened to this knowledge. And what is the proof? Maunam Samatasya Lakshanam. Which means in this world, you will see the most educated people are the biggest of fools. 
you will see that because they don't inquire about soul and body difference at all, the matter and spirit difference at all. Because that is not taught in the college course curriculum, in the school course curriculum, nor do they inquire about it. And they just go on. And they just go on and on with uh, uh, materialistic uh, knowledge you know, of just... You, know, you have to move that, I think. Is it that or here? So, you, know, you will see that uh, even the Brahmanas in India you know, even South India who profess themselves to be belonging to a very high class of Brahmanas. If you, are, if you see that many, many of them, if you consider what is their success, my special master was telling here in America, uh, when, he, when he was, there was one place where there's a Balaji temple, he said. So the trustees of the temple, when my special master met, they were telling, Maharaj, our children have become very advanced nowadays. They are studying in big, big universities in America. And they don't come to temple, they don't even put their foot, they have, because they have become very advanced. So, you know, we do all this taking care of the temple thing and the youngsters don't want to come, you know. And uh, when they were saying it, Maharaj said, uh, they were saying our children are very advanced and, uh, you know, we are, uh, therefore we, you know, we cannot call them to temple and all this knowledge is not appealing to them. Maharaj said, this goes to show their superficial piety and uh, core atheism. <laughs> He may be worshipping Balaji superficially, but he can be atheist still. Because the real uh, theistic person or a godly person is one whose core is godly. You know, therefore, many, uh, many Indians, Brahmanas, they profess their children to be abroad all over the world and making a lot of money, minting dollars. And in the later years, when they become old, the children are not with them. Many of them are dying at death and disappointment. Children far away, children send only dollar notes to them. At that time, they wake up and say, I'm dying, where am I going? They don't know. They are, gro they are actually groping in the darkness at the time of death. So, we can make a lot of money in this world, but if we don't spiritually inquire, we are graduating into ignorance. That's all. And this situation, I'm talking about educated people. What is the use of talking about the ignorant masses? So, our you know, greed for money makes us chase after money so much that we become completely dull-headed. In English, there's a word called duffer. You know duffer? Duffer actually means very dull-headed. We become spiritually dull and materially alert, spiritually inert. We become like that. So therefore, in the Shastra, the very first step in spiritual life is one should learn to ask a question about why there is suffering in this world. Why this world is created? Why do I exist here? Is this world going on without any rhyme or reason? Or is there any meaning of life, goal of life, purpose of life? Why, why at all this world exists? So, there are five stages. It is said Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya. In the Taitri Upanishad. Chaturkhana says that most living entities are Annagata Prana, which means for them the ultimate goal of life is food only. Like in Bombay, you can see, you know, I just I have the picture, I can show you that one minute. Yeah, I got it. I can just share it in just a minute. And see this one. See this one. See, this is how people travel every day in Bombay. You can see. So, actually, I was very surprised. Uh, these people actually get up at 4.35 in the morning. At night, they retire to bed at 10. And all day, they work hard. And in Bombay, you know how much money they get, these people? They get only as much money that is required for your eating and to live in a chal. Chal means, uh, you know what is a chal? Chal means a room which has no door but only a curtain. And there will be mosquitoes in the gutter also. They live in such a place like that. And they get their daily food and then they will be working in construction business. You know, either building a road or building some 
building or something like that. It is travel like this. So I was thinking even Brahmacharya life is not as austere as these people in in a, in a sconsor state. These people slog hard like anything. You know? So the life life in this world is like that. That is the other one. Where it went, I don't know. Achha, you display it from there, huh? Eh? Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, you can. Okay. Actually, the, the notes is not required, I think. Notes is not required because they won't be able to see it so well. Yeah, not required, I think. So, okay, I'll put it down. Only whenever I want to display something, I'll show it. Huh? What is the page number? Yeah, yeah, correct. This one. Okay, not required. They won't be able to see it, yeah. So, uh, I was telling about how uh, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manamaya. If you go, Annamaya actually means food, food, food. Pranamaya means competition for money making. Yeah? And then competition, cutthroat competition, climbing on each other's heads to climb the ladder of success. Yeah? So these two are the most prominent in Kali Yuga, you will find. Either people are after eating or people are after competing. And uh, of course, Manamaya means uh, dreaming. After the digital media field has expanded, there is a lot of dreaming going on all around the world. So much of dreaming. Whatever you cannot get in real life, you watch it in the movie. Watch it on the screen, that's all. Whatever you cannot touch, experience in the real world, you watch it on the screen and have a psychological satisfaction of enjoying it. <laughs> that is Manamaya. And then you will see the real platform of reality begins from the fourth stage, which is Vijnanamaya. Vijnanamaya means to know the difference. Like Uddhalaka, there's a sage. His small boy came from Gurukula back. Father asked, my dear child, what did you learn in the Gurukula? He said, they taught me about the Atma and the Jada, Jada and Chetan, about the difference between matter and spirit. So, then the father asked me, explain to me, what have you understood between the difference between matter and spirit? And the boy was trying to explain little uh, theoretically. So, then the father told him, bring a seed. Then he took a blade and cut the seed into multiple pieces. And then the father said, see, when you cut the seed into pieces, you don't see anything inside. Huh? That which you don't see, that is Atman, he said. And the presence of that Atman is what is making the seed grow into a big banyan tree. So, if you just have the same, you can make an imitation seed of the banyan tree with a plastic or something, and that cannot grow like that. But inside the seed, there is Atman, whose presence is causing the tree to grow so big. Like we say, sequoia tree or a banyan tree or something like that. In the same manner, he said, get me a glass of water, he brought it. Then he asked for a pinch of salt. And then he told him to put the salt inside and mix it. Then he asked him to see the water. Do you see the salt? And the boy said, no, I don't see. That which you don't see, but which is present, that is Atman. Atman you don't see with your eyes, but the Atman is present in the, in the living body. The presence of the Atman is making the body uh, move. And uh, at the time of death, again you don't see the Atman's presence uh, and how the Atma leaves that you don't see. But Atma has left. How do you know? Then you will see that the body doesn't respond. Uh, metabolism has stopped. The red blood becomes white blood. Uh, and all the uh, functioning of the different parts of the body uh, completely stops. Otherwise, you will see that uh, just I'll show you one thing. I can show you here, no? All this function happens when you are the last thing you can
<laughs> c'est ça, hein? Pas de body. <laughs> c'est ça, hein? How the, so, that's why his father explained to him that the body functions when the Atman is present, when the Atman leaves the body, it doesn't function. So, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is telling, Utkramantam Sidambhapi Bunjanam Bhagunan Vitam Vimudana Anupashanti Pashanti Jnana Chakshushaha. Like that he says. Huh? He says that, you know, those, there are two types of people in this world. One is Vimudha, another one is called Jnana Chakshusha. Huh? Jnana Chakshusha means one who is knowledgeable. Uh, about the spiritual truths. He can clearly see when the soul has entered into the body, when the soul is residing in the body, when the soul quits the body and goes to the next body. How the reincarnation happens, what is the mechanism? How the mind is carrying the uh, you know, karma vasanas, which are good karma vasanas or impure karma vasanas, like a wind carrying aromas. Huh? It goes to the next body. So, and the next body, those scripts are all visible in the next body the person's behavior and everything. So, these are all the very complex, difficult, I mean, uh, very subtle subject matter, which is understandable to those who are spiritually minded and those who are inquisitive. They can understand it. Like that he says. And on the other hand, these are called Jnana Chakshusha. And the other category, people call called Mudha. So, there are two types of Mudha, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. One Mudha, he doesn't know the difference between body and soul. He thinks body is everything. When body is finished, everything is finished. He is first Mudha. That, that Prabhu said, Om Dushpitino Muda. Why he says, these fools will not surrender, Krishna says, because they think they are the body. They think body is everything. At the time of death, everything is finished. They think like that, he said. And uh, another Muda, second type of Muda is who? An Avajanantimam Muda. Who is the Muda? He thinks that Krishna is, uh, you know, Krishna's body is also like me, my body or your body. He thinks of Krishna to be ordinary. Uh, he is another type of Muda, he says. So, two types of Mudas in Gita. So, when you can only go back to Godhead when you become a Mudha. What is that word? Nirmana Moha Jita Sangha Dosha Adhyatma Nitya Vini Vritta Kama Vandvair Vimukta Sukha Dukha Sagyair Gachantya Mudha Padamavyayam Tat so, Gachanti Amudha is saying that abode, spiritual abode is for Amudas. Eh? Those who have become full, free from these two foolishness. Eh? So, the matter and spirit difference we should know. And then the spirit and super spirit difference we should know. Hmm? And that we should learn from the scriptures. And inquiring about that is actually the goal of life. Eh? So, and, and the human uh, form of life means it's possible for us to inquire. In the which stage? In the fourth stage, what is it called as? Vijnanamaya stage, correct, no? The Vijnanamaya stage, you can inquire about that. So, actually, Vijnanamaya stage, you can only understand Aham Brahmasmi. Hmm? I am not the body, I am spirit soul. And when you come to Anandamaya stage, you come to the, actually, there is a short uh, Ananda, which is relief from the suffering of pangs of the birth and death. But the oceanic Ananda is explained, ex expressed, I mean, uh, experienced by the jiva when the jiva comes to contact the uh, paramatma uh, the jivatma paramatma sambandha when it is established then the anandamaya stage can be experienced so in the anandamaya stage rasovai saha rasamhi evayam labdva anandi bhavati this is also the Tetri Upanishad it says that rasovai saha the supreme absolute truth is an ocean of bliss uh, and uh, he is always uh, absorbed in that happiness and he distributes that happiness to all the living beings. Just like imagine if there is a socket, you put your finger in the socket, you get a shock. If somebody touches you, they also get a shock. Somebody else touches the second person, they also get a shock. So it's okay. the shock is passed from one person to another. Similarly, the Supreme Absolute Truth is blissfully situated. And any, any Guru Parampara people, you will find now Brahma is contacting. Uh, uh, Lord Vishnu by hearing from him. Hmm. Then Brahma gives it, Narada, Narada gives it, Vaya Vyasa. Everybody experiences the knowledge and bliss in the parampara. So by connecting with the parampara. Now, how do you know we are connected to parampara? Just like look at this bulb, it's all glowing here. That is a proof that the, uh, uh, it's connected by, by wire to the poles. Huh? And the poles are all definitely connected. 
If, if there is a disconnection in any of the pole, how will you know that? There will be no light. Huh? Correct. No? Similarly, if one uh, remains foolish and is not enlightened, that means his connection is weak. Hmm. So, if one becomes enlightened and engladdened, both. Huh? Engladdened means bliss. Enlightened means awakening. Hmm. When these two things happen in our lives, hmm, we become cheerful, very joyful. We become completely con uh, satisfied and experience fulfillment. Hmm. So, uh, the Vijnanamaya stage is the stage of inquisitiveness, huh? asking questions. So you all uh, came to America to study, but along with that you had a spiritual inquiry, therefore you are here. Huh? Because if uh, uh, that inquiry Lord Krishna says in Gita, Manushyanam sahasreshu yatati, uh, kashchi, yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhana kashchin maam veti tatvataha. In that verse, he says that it's very rare one after a thousand people inquire about what is this world, why does it, because everybody is in so much into rat race uh, that they also join the rat race and run with the rat race and die one day not knowing where are they are going. Huh? That's the way the world is. Huh? But uh, some fortunate souls, you know, they don't join the rat race, they go to the side of the road and they watch the rat race huh? and they ask the question, hey, what is this rat race going on? Huh? You know? And let us uh, find out, is this really necessary for me to join this rat race? Yeah. Sometimes, uh, like in, in our school days, we have experience. If, all, if our class friends are running, we also used to run with them. And then seeing us, others will run also. Everybody was running once. So then uh, some boy asked, hey, where are you guys running? We said, we don't know. They are running, we are running behind. <laughs> you know? Everybody is running, 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 and then finally the fellow who ran, he came back to the same class after going all around everywhere. So, in the same manner, you will find in the in the world, people are uh, joining the rat race and they remain a rat only. <laughs> at the end of the day, you will find run, 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 run. At the end of the, there is a story I heard. Once a fellow was going from one village to another village in a bullock cart, and he had his lunch packet, chapati, something, and everything had packed up. So as he was going, carrying some mal, mal means goods from the village. And on the midway in the forest, he found a very, very, very big tree and a shady tree. And there was a very nice platform to sit and eat. So he went and sat there and started eating his, he was about to begin eating his lunch. But then he heard some murmuring sound. And the other side of the tree, there was some sadhu sitting and chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, was chanting, huh? large names. So the fellow felt that, you know, because in Vedic culture, you always have to share with others. So he asked the sadhu, would you like to eat? If you want, I can give you. Uh, he asked him. Sadhu said, no, 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 I am all right here. Yeah. You go ahead, you can eat, go ahead. Sir. So this man while eating was also asking questions to sadhu. He was asking, sadhu baba, what are you doing? He asked. Him. He said, I'm sitting and chanting God's names, he said. He said, are you doing some work? He said. No, this is my work. I chant God's names. I glorify God. He was saying like that. Then the sadhu asked him, what do you do? He, asked him, he said, oh, I'm a busy man, morning to evening. You know, I have to come with this bullock cart eight times a day from this village to this village. Back and forth I go. Huh? This kind of, this is my job every day. And the sadhu asked him, then why do you do like that? He said, yes, what can I do? I have four sons who are growing up now. I have to save money. I am selling this in the in the this thing in the other place and making money. So I have a plan to build four houses, he said. I want to give one one house for each of my sons. Not only that, what a, I have one more ambition, he said. When I keep uh, selling these goods, eventually I am thinking of getting a tractor. If I get a tractor, instead of going eight times, I have to go only two times. And that too, it will be much faster, he said. By the time my sons will be grown up. And they will all get married and they'll give them. Then what you will do, he asked. Then what? Once I give them the houses, they do their business. Then what I will do? Then I can relax. Then I can sit peacefully. Then I can chant God's name. And Sadhu said, that's what I'm already doing. He said, why should you do it at the age of 80? And you are not sure whether you live till 80 also. Now in COVID time, even 80-year-old children died. In Pune, there was an 80-year-old girl who passed away. The COVID time. There was one, one boy who was 32, uh, he also passed away. Almost three or four passed away in, uh, in Pune. 
Hyderabad also two parts of the way. So world could see, world could witness that during COVID time, COVID did not dis differentiate between age groups. There was kids, there were youth, there were old. In Delhi, a very big news came that uh, the crematoriums were over flooding with uh, dead bodies being burned. Then uh, they announced that henceforth no more body will be allowed here because thousands of bodies are coming here. Now they have to use the dog's crematorium also was used for burning the human bodies. Huh? That place also was used for this. So you will see that uh, in this world, uh, when will this bodily machine stop working? We can't say. Once I was glorifying as well as Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj in Pune. Maharaj, you are so hardworking and even in this age, you are traveling so much and stretching yourself, extending yourself. Maharaj, I heard that he goes for 29 Ratayatras in a year he goes. In different places in India, I used to go. In that uh, age, he's 70, he's probably 75, 76 now. Huh? That age also you are doing so much. You know what he said? Radhesham, nobody knows when will this body get punctured. Hmm? Before it gets punctured, as much as I can do for Krishna and Prabhupada, I want to do, he said. So great souls always will live in a renounce the spirit. Hmm? They always know that this body cannot, it will not go on forever. There is no doubt that this body will get punctured one day. Hmm? Punctured means finished. Hmm? That's the end of this body. Some part will create trouble. Either liver will create some trouble or kidney will create trouble or brain will create trouble. It will stop. But before it stops, now one should make a spiritual inquiry about who am I? Why am I living in this world? What is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? So, uh, you know, Parikshit had uh, <coughs> seven days time uh, to make that inquiry. I mean, as soon as he knew that in seven days he has to leave the body, some takshaka will bite him. And seven days he has to leave the body. He knew that my death has come very near. Ata prachami samsidhyam yoginam paramam gurum purushasyeha yadkaryam vriyamanasya sarvada. This is the question he asked. He asked, vriyamanasya um, means a dying man, what is his duty? And the people in general, what is their duty? And then he is asking another question. Yat shotavyam, yat kirtitavyam, yat smartavyam. He is saying, what should be heard? What should be uh, glorified? What should be remembered? And what should not be heard? What should not be glorified? What, not, what should not be remembered? That is another two questions he asked. Totally four questions totally. Correct, no? One question is about you know, what is the duty of a dying man? Because I am going to die in seven days, he said. And then what is the duty of general people? That's the second question. And what all should be heard, glorified and remembered? Another question is, what all should not be heard, glorified and remembered? Can any of you guess out of these four questions, which is the first question Shukadeva Goswami answered out of the four? I told you four questions now. He inquired these four questions. And even Shukadeva Goswami. What is the first question he answered? Amongst you, we all feel which question is most important, you feel, to be answered. Uh, what is the duty of time? But he didn't answer that. No, he didn't answer that. Huh? No, generally, that also he didn't answer. First, he answered what should not be done. Rajendra Nam Santi Apashyatam Atma Dattvam Griheshu Griha He says, Hey, Parikshit, in this world, all the people have hundreds and thousands of subjects to hear. People hear about politics, people hear about sports, people hear about cinemas, actors and actresses, Bollywood actors, actresses, they hear. Thousands of subject matters they have. Even the birds are also choo -choo 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 in the morning, they are also talking to each other. Where is my food? Where is my mate? Same thing human beings are also talking. You go to the stock market, there's a loud noise there. You know, do you think they're talking about love of God? They are talking about love for money. How can, how can you make more money? Correct, no? That's a big noise you hear. Huh? So he says, Shotam Yadini Rajendra, Rinam Santi Sahasra Shaka, thousands of subjects they talk about. And then he says, Apashyatam Atma Tattvam. But these people are blind to the knowledge of self-realization. Griheshu Griha Medinam, he says. They are all stuck in their materialistic duties of just eat, drink and be merry. You know, how to make the two ends meet in this world. Hmm? Uh, 
griham edi means if you keep a stick in the center uh, and uh, a cow, bull goes around it round and round like that they have made the home the center and they are going round and round how to build the house and how to eat well how to sleep well how to enjoy well that is the they, they call griham edi and then he says dehavatya kalatradishu atma sainyeshu asatsopi tesham pramatto nidhanam pashyanapi na pashyati he is saying what is the confidence of these people materialistic people they are feeling con false confidence in the temporary shelters no? they are thinking that my mother is there my father is there my brothers and sisters are there our bank balance is there our family doctor is there police is there and my very rigid lives totally built to our own home my own home my own car is there so these are my shelter he is saying asat sanyeshu asat sobi he is saying that these are all fallible soldiers one by one they will be gone you will be left alone in this world huh? you have to drive your plane they will have to drive their plane huh? nobody can save you in this world nobody will remain with you actually i saw it i was very attached to my grandfather grandfather passed away then i was attracted to my mother's mother amma i used to call him so he was most dear to all of us and she passed away also then eventually i saw my mother father also passed away it was 17 17 Hmm. And another observation I made when I was a small boy, you know, so much love relatives give you. Everybody picks you up and keeps you on their lap and feeds you laddu and everything. So you were like a darling of everybody. Huh? But when I grew up, after some time, I said somebody called me Anna. Huh? He became an elder brother to ask somebody. Then somebody called me Mama huh? because my sisters got married and their sons' daughters came. They started calling Mama. Now very soon somebody is going to call me Tata now. Huh? And I'm already I'm 55 now. <laughs> you know what is Tata? <laughs> grandfather <laughs> and tata means you are now preparing to quit the body now <laughs> correct now you will see that you, you so in this world gradually gradually you are uh, ousted out of the world <laughs> you know the word oust in english hmm. oust means what you are pushed out of the room <laughs> you cannot remain here forever <laughs> you are ousted <laughs> you are thrown out <laughs> eventually from this body <laughs> you will see that so that's what he is saying we all give false shelter to one another in this world actually imagine for example some group of uh, birds are flying in the sky one fellow takes a gun and shoots one of the birds what do you think other birds will do na huh? they will continue flying correct no they will all fly only one will be hit so that is how our relationship in this world is one fellow dies others continue living and the second fellow dies others continue on Finally, you find you are the only bird. Others are all gone. <laughs> You'll find like that one by one. So everybody has to drive their own plane. That's what this verse says. Deha patya kalatra adishu. Kalatra means wife. Adishu means then sons, daughters, grandsons, and all that. Atma sanya ishu. They are all actually fallible sanya. Sanya means they look like soldiers around you to protect you. Any of you go for any marriage party, your relatives all it is come. You feel a lot of confidence, false confidence. Oh, I have so many relatives, huh? and all these guys will take care of me whenever I have trouble. You get into trouble tomorrow, nobody will be there. Everybody will run away. Hmm? Like you want to do chemotherapy tomorrow, hmm? how many relatives will come forward to give you money? Hmm? Many of them give little money, but ultimately they will run out of money. Huh? You will see that. So, and then he is saying, "Teesham pramatto nidhanam pashya na pina pashyati." Even though the living beings can see many many people dying in this world, he never thinks that my death is going to come. And then Shukadev Goswami said that uh, these type of people one should not associate with. Therefore, don't hear. He said, uh, what should not be heard about? He said, don't hear prajalpa. Any mundane knowledge, don't hear. He says, and what should not be glorified? Don't glorify mundane heroes. All mundane heroes will become zeros. All Hollywood, Bollywood actors, actors, they will all become zeros. It's only a matter of time. They will. they are here today gone tomorrow huh? such kinds of people so don't hear about them don't glorify them don't remember them don't pollute your mind by watching all useless stuff huh? he said that's the first thing he said out of four questions see all of you said the three questions <laughs> other than the three the fourth one he answered so why am i so strongly speaking this morning you will see that i am i am actually following in guru parampara of shukadev goswami huh? shukadev goswami first said what should not be heard he didn't say about what should be heard So when Mahaprabhu when he was preaching to Sanatana Goswami, first thing he said, "Asat Sangatyaar, a Vaishnava Acharya." He didn't say what is Vaishnava Acharya. He said, "Asat Sangatyaar is Vaishnava Acharya." He said, 
you have to give a bad association. That is the first conduct of a Vaishnava. You may say, Mahaprabhu, why don't you say about offering obeisances and praying to the Lord? Some good things you can begin with. No. He didn't begin with any good thing. He told, you give up bad association, he said. Uh, that is the first conduct of a Vaishnava. He said. And then he told many other conducts of Vaishnava. He said. Similarly, Shruti Goswami, the first thing he said, uh, that what should not be heard about. Same thing, Brahma also. Yenna vrajanta gavido rajana anuvadat shrinvanti yenya vishaya ko kathamati gnihi yastushuta hata bhagai nrivi ratta sarat tam stam kshipanti asharane shutamas suhanta this is the first verse then what he says here the devatas yenna vrajanti agavido agavit means the supreme lord who is agavit destroyer of sinful reactions aham tvam sarva pape bhyo so agavit we call it Yenna Brajanti Agavito Rachananu Vada. If one does not study Krishna Katha of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is uh, about the glories of the Supreme Lord who is destroyer of sinful activities and sinful reactions, then what he does? Shrinvanti. Then the people will end up listening to Kukata. What is Kukata? Huh? Kukata. Kukata means uh, Asat Katha. That means talking about uh, gossip. Srinvanti, ye anya vishaya means, anya vishaya means they, they are not hearing about God, definitely they will hear about something else. You, you cannot say, I don't hear about anything. You have to hear, you have to see, you have to glorify. If you don't glorify Krishna, you will be glorifying some mundane success. You will see that. If you don't read about Krishna, you will read about some mundane literature, or mundane videos you will watch. It, 100% you can write a bond and give. You will see that anybody. If you are not doing this, you have to do that. Because you have senses. You cannot avoid it. And Srinvanti ye anya vishaya kukata mati gni. He is saying mati gni means, mati means intelligence. Gni means destroyer. So all this uh, unwanted global gossip, it is a destroyer of the pure spiritual intelligence. He says, yastu shruta, by hearing those stuff, what they do? Hata bhagair, they become unfortunate, he is saying. The viratta saras, the essence of human life is extracted out. It is like, uh, you know, imagine somebody takes a sugar cane and extracts out the juice and gives you only the, uh, the waste product. Uh, what can you do with that? There is no sar in that. So, similarly, if you see modern day people, morning to night they are slogging so hard. The night they are like that sugar cane which is extracted out. The viratta saras. The essence of life is extracted out. They have no... Therefore, we find even when you speak spiritual stuff, many people are blinking. Many guys, because they don't have good intention, understand only. Their whole head is flooded with so much of material vibrations. Uh, like that. So, and then tam, tam, chipanti, they are cast into what? Asharaneshu means unsheltered. Tamasu means hell. Hantaha, alas, he's saying. Alas, how unfortunate the people of this age are degraded and they are all falling into hell, he's saying. Then the next verse he said, on the contrary, if somebody is hearing Krishna Katha regularly uh, and they are chanting the holy name, taking darshan of the deities, rendering services, very soon their hair will stand on end and the tears will well up in the eyes and the pastimes of the Lord will influence their heart and take over their heart. You know? And then, just like Vaman Dev, you know, came as a small dwarf brahmana, but he took over all the three words. Like that, our heart will be conquered by the Lord, you know, by taking in those spiritual vibrations. And then, even in a world full of maya, we will never be affected, we'll be untouched, you know, like that he says. So, in this way, when Parikshit made the inquiry, uh, Shukadeva Goswami told the waters not to be heard and everything. And then he eventually he... Uh, you know, he came to the came to tell him about what should be done also. Tasma Bhar. Therefore, he says the word Tasma. Correct, no? Tasma Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavan Ishwaro Harihi Shrota Vyakitita Vyascha Smarta Vyascha Chata Abhayam is saying. One who wants to attain a fearless platform of spiritual life, then one should hear about Tasma Bharata. Sarvatma. Sarvatma means the Lord who is present in the heart of all living entities as Antaryami. Who is he? Super soul. Lord Krishna. Sarvatma. Bhagavan is he's also Lord of six opulences. Ishwaro. He's a supreme controller. 
and his name is Hari. He's saying, "Tasmat Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavan Ishwaro Hari Hi Shrotavya." Shrotavya means is worthy of hearing about. Huh? Smartavya is worthy of remembering. Kirtitavya is worthy of glorifying. So Krishna's pastime should be glorified because he is a true hero. You know, he has oceanic beauty and the beauty never fades. He has oceanic strength and the strength never diminishes. His oceanic wealth, but Lakshmi is always at his lotus feet. He is never bereft of uh, any wealth. He is not like the beggar becoming a pauper. Huh? That will never happen to him. So, therefore, he deserves to be glorified. And so, like that, he told, This is what you should do. And in the coming following seven days, this is what I will do, he said. Then Parikshit uh, said, Sir, I have seven days, I am afraid whether is seven days enough for me to perfect my life huh? in this very short duration of time. What do you think? Then he said, uh, uh, do not worry. Uh, I will tell you an encouraging uh, story to you. Then he told, Katvango nama raja rishi jnatpe yuktam iha yushaha muhurtat sarva mutsrajya gatavan avayam harim. He said, there was one very great king called Katwanga, very devotee king, wonderful devotee king. Once he was invited by demigods to heaven to assist them in fighting against Asuras. And he was a very valiant warrior. He defeated Asuras and drove them away. Demigods became very pleased with him. So then they asked him, what do you want, Katwanga? Tell us. You want gold or silver or diamond? Or you want horses or elephants or costly woolen clothes, sweater, it's a chill winter is going on in Boston. Huh? So you want a very nice uh, woolen uh, sweater or you want beautiful apsaras hmm? or you want a vast kingdom to rule. Whatever you ask, we will provide you. Hmm? However hard it may be to obtain, but within the world of mortals. Ritam huh? Kaivalyam, except giving you moksha, everything else we can give you within this world. Huh? So, Katwanga, he was a devotee king. He said, keep all those gifts with you. I don't want. Tell me only one thing. Look at my panchanga and, uh, at my, in my, and look at my horoscope and tell me how much more duration of life is there with me. So I will check whether I have adequate time to prepare for my going back to Godhead. He said. Then uh, demigods looked at me. Oh, alas, we are sorry to tell you. You have only one muhurta left for you. Uh, your death has approached very near. One more to mean something like 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Huh? Only that much you have time. And uh, Katwanga didn't speak a word. Zoom immediately came to earth huh? and went to his puja room in his palace and took his mala, japmala, and started chanting the holy name. And in that one muhurta, remembering Krishna intensely, Gatavana Vayam Harim. He went back to Godhead. So the devatas told him, I mean, uh, Shurya Goswami told uh, Parikshet, that just see, even one muhurta he could perfect his life. And you have how many days? Seven days. You have nothing to worry. Recently, in uh, Hyderabad, there is one very famous couple, uh, doctor couple, uh, Barsana Rani Mataji and uh, uh, Chaitanya Keshav Prabhu, well known in congregation, very wonderful devotee, very senior. I think she must be probably 60, 55, 60, I think. Prabhuji must be 65, I think. So, this couple, um, they are very charitable, they conduct programs, many things they are doing. So, Prabhuji called me and said, Prabhu, Rajampur, something very emergency, I urgently want to talk to you. I asked, what is the matter? I attended to him. He said that my wife has developed some complication in the intestine and the uh, doctor is saying it is rapidly growing. And please pray for her and all. So, then the same day afternoon, they came to know that she has a fourth stage cancer. Huh? And, uh, and the doctor said that she has only a few days left, maybe less than a month left. And uh, of course, they took her to various hospitals and everything she understood. But the most amazing thing for me, as soon as she heard the doctor say that, all of you think for a moment, what will be your first response? If the doctor tells you that you have less than a month left, you know, what was the first response? When he was talking to him, that is the time the doctor had come to the home. And doctor, I mean, they called the doctor and then when they checked, the, the results had come. The results showed that she has a fourth stage cancer. It is in a ripe stage. Very soon, it is going to ravage the body. And she has to leave the body. So her first response was, she said, 
Oh, really? You know, I am so blessed that I'll be very soon meeting Krishna huh? in Goloka Vrindavan along with all her gopis and gopas and cows and calves. I have only been reading Krishna books. Now I am so blessed that the time has come when I have to quit the body. My term is over in this body now. And she was smiling. Can you imagine? That was her consciousness. Everybody was shocked huh? when they saw her behavior. And after that, we called the Jonas Radhanath Maharaj. And Maharaj called her on phone and spoke to her. 10-15 minutes, Maharaj chanted with her also. And gave her confidence and assurance. And then all the people came to her home. And the next following day, she was requesting them to read some selected sections of the 10th canto. Like Yagi Brahmana's wife's past time, she wanted to hear that. Like the selected sections, they read. Uh, she, was, she was hearing that. Many devotees were doing Kirtan also. Her son was in America. And it was actually, uh, he came to know about it on 28th December. So he wanted to immediately fly back to India, but the hospital won't allow him. The hospital said that your contract is till 2nd January. Huh? You have to stay till then. So if you go, you know, of course, uh, he may even lose his job huh? if he goes and he may not be able to return back to US. So he called up the parents and talked on phone. He was weeping. The mother told him, no, better, don't worry. Till you come back, I'll be alive. Don't worry. But in case I'm not alive, in case I go, don't worry. You know, we have been devotees. I'm going to a very good destination. There's nothing to worry. And she gave him assurance. And 1st January, I had to leave India and come. So I called that family on phone and told them, Mataji, I'm sorry, I have to go to America. I'm not able to be here uh, uh, in this uh, situation, but I'm praying for you. She said, oh, Rashampu, have a safe journey. Uh, you know, I have nothing to worry. I'm surrounded by devotees. I'm hearing Krishna Katha. Devotees are coming and doing Krishna Kirtan. And the uh, spiritual master spoke to me. And, you know, I am left with uh, such a deep remembrance of his mercy. In my life, I never thought, uh, after initiation, I will ever talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> now I got the opportunity. I could talk to him. I, I feel very blessed. And uh, she said, I am very, uh, I am extremely appreciative of your youth preaching activities. And they have been uh, donating to youth preaching every month. Uh -huh. A lot of money they have given. They built uh, two halls in the top in the Hyderabad temple. They had a big hand in that. Mm -hmm. Been giving a lot of donations. She said, amongst all the different uh, things that happen in Iskand India, I am very, very happy with your this thing, youth preaching. You are bringing so many youths and uh, they are becoming fixed up devotees. And she was like this, appreciative. Then I came and her son could uh, reach India by 5th. He reached there. You know, fourth or fifth age, and she left the body on eighth. She left experience. So I am saying this, you know, she is a doctor herself. Her husband is a doctor. It's a whole family full of doctors. They have two dozen doctors in their family. But you will see that you may be a doctor, but you can't repair your body. You know, this body is a collapsing phenomenon. Therefore, before this body collapses, one should make that inquiry. You know, Tapta Jignasa, Brahma Jignasa. And most of the gurus nowadays who appear in the international scene, they hardly talk about birth, death, old age disease. They mostly talk about, they speak some humor, they speak some fun. Basically, they pamper the people. They pamper the people and leave them, that's all. They flatter the people, accept the donation, and then they leave them. Like one very famous guru, I don't want to mention the name. Nowadays, people think guru means you should have a long flowing beard and a, is one of the Bhakti Vikas Maharaj Maharaj just telling. Nowadays, Guru means you have to have a long flowing beard, long mustache, long hair. And in, that, uh, in, in the midst of that long flowing beard, there is a hole, which is the mouth. And that uh, mouth speaks all nonsense, he was telling. <laughs> that is the modern Guru. So, one such so called Guru, uh, why, actually, many students used to ask him questions. Three, four students will be sitting, and he will be sitting there, and they will ask him questions. So, in the question, when they asked, they asked him, Sir, as students, what is your instruction to us? They asked. As students, what is your instruction to us? So he said, just do your studies, that's all. And this uh, spirituality and all is very advanced. You just keep doing your studies, eventually you will evolve, like that he said. Yeah. So I was thinking, if Prabhupada was asked the question, students asking what you should do, Prabhupada, first what he will say? This example, what he will Prabhupada say first? Students asking, I ask students, what do, you, what do you think we should do? What would Prabhupada say? Chant Hare Krishna, you would say, yeah, correct. You would first say, chant Hare Krishna. 
Because if you don't understand Hare Krishna, you cannot cleanse your mind. If you don't cleanse your mind, you can't discipline your senses. You can't have character. It's not possible. So chant Hare Krishna, the first thing. After that, what you will say? Huh? Read Bhagavad Gita, you will say, yes. You are studying college textbooks. Read, read Bhagavad Gita also. Along with that, study Bhagavad Gita regularly, you will say. What else you will say? Yeah? Come to temple and associate with devotees, you may say. What else you will say? Hey, Prasad, all of you are saying many things, one important thing which Prabhupada says you are not told. No illicit sex, no meditating, no intoxication, no gambling. See, first Prabhupada writes everywhere, no illicit sex is first there. And next serious thing is no meat eating. And then third serious thing is no intoxication. Then lastly, he says gambling. You see everywhere in Prabhupada's writings, you will see. But today, students are so corrupt in their behavior. Illicit sex has become so rampant now. Prabhupada would say that first, no illicit sex. And then meat eating is so rampant. 90% of the world population is eating meat. Therefore, the world is suffering so badly. So no meat eating, you would say. No forms of intoxication. And Prabhupada talks about it in the colleges, the right in the beginning itself, he speaks everywhere. So, now Prabhupada, this is one thing I liked with Prabhupada's books. He, although it may be hurting to you, but he is very honest and straightforward about what you should do. And this is not his own idea. Dyutam, Panam, Sriya, Sona, Yatra, Adharmas, Chaturvida. Bhagavatam says that. Uh, uh, these four activities should be given up. Bhagavatam says that. So, I was thinking that uh, Swamiji, you know, you know, he is a great personality. He is an influential personality. Worldwide, he is uh, very popular and everything. But he is not telling the truth. <laughs> Although he claims to be speaking the truth. <laughs> he is not speaking the truth. You can see that he is cheating the people. Prabhupada asked, are you a teacher or are you a cheater? No? Actually, you know, for example, if I spoke to you the truth strongly, you became angry with me. Hey, this Swamiji is too heavy. And he went away. One man went away from Prabhupada like that. You know, he walked out. He was very angry. And the disciples were Prabhupada. Prabhupada, you spoke, your lecture was a little strong today. The person ran away. So Prabhupada said, at least he ran with the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Someday he will think, you know, when he gets a punch on the nose, he will think, hey, Swamiji correctly said, I get punch. Now he got the punch. At least he ran with the truth. Another time, one devotee had put a book table. One fellow stole Bhagavad Gita and ran away. And the devotee called, told to Prabhupada, you know, I'm sorry, today we lost some books. One fellow stole Bhagavatam and ran away. Prabhupada said, really? He's a lucky thief. He said, no. <laughs> Why is a lucky thief? <laughs> He's a lucky thief because he ran with what? Yeah. So, that fool doesn't know when he goes home and reads Bhagavatam, he'll come running back to Krishna again. Correct, no? The one fellow stole Chaitanya Prabhu's laptop, you know, in airport. Because Chaitanya was talking on phone to somebody. When he turned around, he saw laptop was missing. So, then uh, he had to put a police complaint. But Chanjan was certainly very intelligent devotee. So what he had done, he had, uh, he had a mechanism outside by which he can arrest the computer. You know, that he will not, that fellow cannot access anything in the computer. He cannot just go inside only. Uh, so that fellow also, thief also kept the computer wondering, maybe somebody will help me to crack the code, you know, to go inside. So but Chanjan Prabhu didn't release that. Then Chanjan Prabhu given a police complaint. The police were searching. And they were suspicious about one person, one thief, because they have all the thieves list now, suspicious. Then uh, one devotee suggested that tell that thief that the person who lost the laptop is a monk. And he also is a monk with some you know, physical disability. Uh, and therefore, please, if you, have, if you have taken, please give it back. So even a thief felt sympathy, can you imagine? And the thief heard that it's a monk. We should not steal from a monk because monk people are beggars actually. And whatever others give charity, that's how they live. So the thief gave the laptop to his wife and said, the police people will come here to use the laptop. So he was out of station. So they went to their home and they got the laptop and they passed it on to Chanchan. It came back to him. So anyway, that came, I came to my mind. But what I felt was he's a lucky thief. Why? Because he got connected to a monk through stealing and he felt sympathy for a monk and gave it back. <laughs> Correct, huh? So, hopefully, someday he will reach Anjan Pooh's articles and become devotee. <laughs> Correct? <laughs> so, Prabhupada's idea was what? The truth should be spoken. So, when somebody inquires, then he can speak the truth. So, that inquiry should be made. Meaningful inquiry should be made. So, only one topic we covered today. What was the topic we covered?
making spiritual inquiry. The importance of making spiritual inquiry, we talk. So there are six steps to success. Six steps, what are they? Inquire, hear, apply, and then serve, serve, satisfy, concept. These are the six. So one first one we have discussed very well. Because we have inquired well, then you hear well, then after that apply it in your life. Then while applying in your life, then you feel very inspired in spiritual life. Then you go and serve the Guru. And serve in such a way that you try to satisfy him. Yasya Prasadat. Then um, you are, by serving him, you please him, you make advancement in spiritual life. Then you go and consult him. For, uh, I am uh, experiencing this. I have this realization. Am I right? What do you think? So you can ask questions to Guru for that. That means Chait Mahaprabhu became uh, advanced devotee in Bhava. He had tears swelling up in his eyes. So he went to Guru and asked, you know, oh my dear Guru Maharaj, when I am chanting the holy, holy name, Japita Japita Hoila Pagal, he said. Kiva Mantra Dila Gosai Kiva Tarabal, Japita Japita Hoila Pagal, he said. What mantra have you given Guruji? When I am chanting this, I am becoming mad. I am running here and there, loudly shouting the holy name and tears are coming in my eyes. You know, am I becoming crazy or am I all right? His Guru said, my dear child, Eita Swabhava, he said. This is a Swabhava of the holy name. If anybody chants the holy name inoffensively, he becomes completely Niraparadi. Huh? Niraparadi Naam, Shuddha Naam, he chants. And he cries tears in ecstasy. He loudly shouts, he runs here and there in ecstasy. What you are experiencing is perfect. Go ahead, go on chanting like this. This is the ultimate goal of life, he told them. So, even in Bhava stage, he consulted his Guru, Ishwar Puri. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu consulted. In this way, the six steps are very important. And uh, we have to, uh, just like in cricket, people ask, Sir, how did you become a national champion and then you entered the cricket team? Uh, or people ask a millionaire, Sir, can you write a book on how you became a millionaire or a billionaire? People write books, correct? Like that. So you all know very well that in your own field, you meet a Ustad. Ustad means an expert. And you go and ask him, Sir, how did you become an expert? If you are a computer engineer, you go to a big computer specialist and you ask him, how did you become so? In the same manner, in spiritual life, you have to ask how to advance in spiritual life. How did you become so advanced? One should ask the spiritual master and learn from Guru principles by which we can also become advanced. That is actually called Sadharma Pricha. The first one, inquiry, inquisitiveness and inquiry. So we'll conclude with this. It's already time. You must be hungry for Prasad now. Shil Prabhupada ki. Kaur Bhakta Vrinda ki. Thank you very much.